Need fast, cheap, reliable MUD coins? Go to MMOXP.com for the cheapest coins on the market. And use discount code MONEYSHOT for an additional 5% off your next order. Link in the description below. <laughs> Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing at the Madden cheese as always. Got another gameplay slash tip video for you guys today. Today, I'm on an offensive video. Uh, you can see I'm starting off with the Green Bay Packers playbook. This is one of my favorite playbooks. Low key, one of the best passing playbooks in the game, uh, and definitely one of the best ebooks on my site. If you guys want to check that out, you're gonna see some good plays of that today. Uh, but ultimately, this is a tips video. I'm gonna do an offensive tips video, and I'm gonna start off with some tips on how to build your team because whether you play CFM, Mutt, or even Regs, in Regs you can go into the the depth chart and improve your team instantly just by making the right uh you know substitutions so ultimately that's going to be the first tip and the first tip is pretty obvious in my opinion when it comes to madden the most important things are speed you can see right here i'm always taking the fastest player whether it's the fastest tight end of the three that they selected the fastest running back the fastest quarterback the fastest corners the fastest receivers speed is always the way to go because that's you know it's just typically the best idea now here I actually make a mistake i choose mike allstott over the fastest running back because i already had a running back even the running back i already had was slow so ultimately speed's the most important thing i regret it throughout this series because ultimately that particular position you're not going to see a ton of running out of my offense because based off of that but ultimately i'm a passer anyway and then i run into a little bit of a problem as well when it comes to the receivers they don't they don't give me a lot of receivers like they don't give me a lot of receivers or cornerbacks so ultimately I know I have to, since my system is both mostly passing based, I really have to build my team towards that system. So that's going to be something throughout the rest of this uh, draft that I really focus on as I'm running out of rounds. I almost take uh, Julian Edelman, but I realize that to me, George Kittle is probably just as good of a receiving option as he is. So I take him. And then the last draft picks, I have no choice. I have to take corners and I have to take receivers, whatever's available, because ultimately my system requires it based on my offensive and defensive looks. So that's it. That's the draft. I got to be honest with you. This is probably one of the worst drafts that has given me in a while. I got a tight end at the third wide receiver spot. I don't really feel like I have enough cornerbacks. I got a safety at a cornerback spot. I'm not very happy with the draft, but it's not going to matter because ultimately the tips I give you are going to help me succeed uh, in this gameplay regardless. If you guys want to see more gameplay from this draft champions all the way through to the end, let me know in the comments section and hit the like button because I could uh, definitely do that. Other than that, let's go and let's get right into the gameplay. So, starting off, looking at my opponent's uh, top three cards, I can tell already he had a better draft than me. That's the type of players that you really want to try to get or have on your team or build your team around is really overpowered players like Michael Vick and his speed, Bo Jackson, uh, you know, Tyree Kill type speed receivers. That's what you want, and he has a couple of players like that. On my side, I really don't have anybody like that. I don't consider Reggie Wayne in that class at all. So I'm going to have to step my game up when it comes to, uh, you know, my schemes and stuff like that. And that's probably my second tip or my first tip as far as gameplay goes. Make sure you run schemes. Set your audible plays. You have no idea what your opponent's defense is going to run. So set your audible plays to, you know, have one for every defense. I have two run plays uh, for different types of defensive looks, and I also have my passing plays set up for different defensive types of looks uh, for as many different defensive coverages as I possibly can fit into that. Uh, and then ultimately, you can see it took up pretty much all my time. But I'm still going to make sure that I set up future plays. And I'm going to do that by motioning out this receiver here. It doesn't have anything to do with this particular play. But the next play it will. And that's why I'm motioning him out now. So either he doesn't notice when I do it on the next play. Or maybe he does. Ultimately the reaction doesn't really matter. But I want my offensive plays to look consistently the same. On this play however he's pretty much got it locked in a, in a man coverage. I'm going to throw it to the closest receiver to the boundary. Because it's all about risk management. I really didn't have anywhere else to go with the ball. But at least I threw it in a position where either my guy's going to catch it. Or it's going to be out of bounds. And that's all I could really ask for. So on the next play like I said I make that motion like I was saying. Ultimately he takes the cheese. He's biting all all over that motion receiver psych which leaves me wide open for the play that i wanted which is the one play touchdown against the cover three It's one thing to have a one-play touchdown. It's another thing to set it up because users can always take away the read that you're trying to go to if they know where you're going. So you always have to show them one thing and, and basically hit them with something else. So you can see how quickly I can set it up with just two plays. On the next play, Michael Vick's going to be a big part of this guy's offense. That's why, like I was saying, when building your offense, you really want to try to have overpowered matchup nightmares like Michael Vick and his speed or, you know, 
Sean Alexander isn't really that guy, but Michael Vick is, and that's why you can see right there I changed over to an all-out man blitz because I'm reacting to try to stop that speed, that running of that quarterback, uh, which I'm not doing when it comes to running the ball. You can see Sean Alexander here is not having any success. He's got a three tight end set, and I'm not respecting it at all. I'm coming out in my base defense. Uh, on this next play, uh, Michael Vick rolls out. Now, this is the problem I was talking about. You know what I mean? I know that he's going to try to either run for the ball or throw for the running back. I have to stick with the running back because either way, it's a loss. I was hoping I could hit stick him once he crossed the line, but it didn't work out. And then on the next play, I'm right back into my base defense. And ultimately, he probably should have kept running because he's not going to pass on this defense gotcha, bitch. as we get the interception. So ultimately, we get the ball right back right back on offense and we're going to go ahead we're going to mix it up we're not going to go right back to the same offensive package that we just used because obviously he's going to be watching for that we're going to use a completely different offensive package we're going to go with the next single back double south so hopefully by the time i go back to that other offensive series he forgot about it entirely i want to be unpredictable then when i come to the line though he's got a wide open look i guess that <laughs> last offensive package i ran against him uh must have really left a, a, a mark because you can see he's coming out in a three deep i guess he doesn't want to get bombed on again uh and now I'm going to keep him in a hurry up if that's what he's going to do i got him in an obvious defensive disadvantage and i'm going to basically just hit the hurry up button until i can get some free yards here or i'm going to make him call a timeout it's really his choice but either way that's an advantage to my offense so make sure you're always looking for obvious advantages when it comes to things like the run game or the pass game no matter what you want to do you got to be flexible if they're coming out in something stupid where they're leaving you wide open gaps you got to take it so i let it go back to the hollow base off the fact that my running back got tired pretty quick uh, and then I'm going to go right back to the same offensive package. And I'm going to stay in this offensive package as long as I can have success. Once again, setting up all my audibles, you can see I got them all aligned. This is something I'm going to do in every single offensive formation that I'm in. Uh, and then ultimately, this next play that I pick, I was going to try to hit a one-play touchdown against a cover three, which he's in. But you can see, I mean, for whatever reason, he just wants to broadcast that he's over here. Letting me know that he's probably going to be watching that Y route and that B route. So I don't want to necessarily throw it in that direction. I'm going to take a much smarter pick. I'm going to go with the check down here. Uh, which ultimately I threw a little bit early. If I would have been, if I had a little bit better timing, I probably could have made a play out of that. Next play, I audible into something crossing because once again, um, you know, I need to pick up more. I was going to go with the run, but ultimately I, I felt like I had something here against the cover three, and then sure enough, I have another big play going across the uh, across the field against them. I'm going to stay in this offensive package once again. I'm not going to leave it from play to play. I typically try to stay in it for a couple plays throughout the series, I'm trying to hit him with a fullback dive. That's ultimately the play that I audible out of in the first place. Uh, but I want to run a little clock here so i'm gonna go ahead and hit him with this just to see if it works and like i said having mike allstott i'm trying to utilize him based off the fact that that was a fullback dive but it didn't necessarily work out that was a play that was way better in years prior so for my next tip, I would say based off of where I am on the field right now, this is probably an area right before where people really start to struggle, and that's the red zone. A lot of people really have trouble scoring once they get closer and closer to the end zone based off the fact that the field gets smaller. So my next tip would be ultimately try to avoid the red zone altogether. That's why I run an explosive passing scheme because I'm trying to score from, from a distance. Scoring from a distance is actually easier for some people anyway than it is from scoring from close up. If you get close in, you can ultimately just throw a lot of run plays at your opponent and usually score that way but it's a lot easier to score when you have more options from a distance like this the more field your opponent has to cover, the ultimately easier it is to move the ball on them. So it's easier to score from there. On the defensive side, I hit my opponent with a max zone concept. This play should look familiar. I put this out not too long ago. And sure enough, he's not going to recognize that. He's going to throw right into it gotcha, bitch. and get picked off. Rod Woodson here gets up. He's going to take it back the other way. He's going to have the game of his life in this game, which I'm not sure if it's him or the schemes that I'm picking or what. Uh, but you're going to see him make a lot of plays here to finish out this game. So pick six for Rod Woodson next play I'm coming out of my base defense, and he's going to hit me with a hellacious uh, rollout here. As you can see, Michael Vick is basically the plan from here on out. What? Hits me with a really nice juke. Uh, he's just basically taking off. I mean, I got a base. It's to the point I realize I got to stop him. So on the next defensive series, I'm going to switch up my game plan a little bit. I just wanted something with a very widespread alignment. So I look around, and I find this dime sugar weak play, the cover two man out of this. I really pick this because I'm not really worried about his run game anymore. I'm ultimately, I just want a widespread that I can spread everybody out try to get after the quarterback hit a QB contain so ultimately hopefully they can hold the edge down but I get a result that I really wasn't expecting
expecting is Rod Woodson does something. I don't know what this is. He runs all the way around the defense and then basically just tracks Michael Vick for a sack fumble. Like I said, I don't know if it's the play or the player. I don't know what it is, but Rod Woodson's going to go off. In the very next play, we're going to do that again, expecting a somewhat similar result. Uh, but ultimately, Rod Woodson just kind of glitches out this time. He just runs right off the field. <laughs> He's going to the locker room at halftime. Where you going? We get the sack again, though, from a different player entirely. Is Like I said, this is a very good alignment. And we're going to keep doing that setup. On the very next play, it's a run play. And Rod Woodson just comes knifing in and makes the stop there as well. So we're definitely having a lot of success with this play. We call it one more time on 4th and 23. And Vic is just taking off. Like I said, that's his only game plan now. As nothing's getting open and we're just getting a lot of pressure. Nope. And he does not get the first. He doesn't quit, though, which is surprising. So we're going to get to the point now. We're up three touchdowns. We're pretty much just going to try to run up the clock. Uh, because ultimately, what do I really need to do? I'm up three scores. I think this guy's not going to quit, so I really don't care about the score anymore. I just want to. I just want to wind the clock down. We're going to hit him with a couple of runs just to make sure that we uh, turn the sticks over, and then ultimately we're going to try to put this game away. We call a timeout. Going to hit him with another uh, a potential one play touchdown. I just put this out recently as well. It's a really glitchy play, really glitchy setup to the B route here. When I smart route, it's supposed to destroy zone, and that's exactly what it does. You can see right here. I would have a touchdown, but I don't know. I should, probably shouldn't have loaded it um, you know something happened there I just didn't get the pass that I wanted and I'm out of bounds but I guess he saw enough so ultimately he's gonna go ahead he's gonna hit the quit button uh, and that's it that's the video if you guys want to see more videos like this more gameplays from this particular series do me a favor hit the like button let me know in the comment section other than that thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bits and more link in the description below